This playthrough is rated T for teen. Ah, uh, the smell of the barge. The smell of the sea, except it's done tied into the sea. Why would people live on that 24-7? I don't know. Greetings and salutations, viewers. While we're back here with another episode of Siberia. In the last episode, we finally got the barge moving, so now all we have to do is tie up the uh, boat and move it forward so we can finally charge it up. Will we do it today? Well, let's find out. I'll try to see if I can get to the end of Chapter 2 today. We'll see. We'll be pretty close, if anything. We'll, we'll see how long the certain scenes occur. Not that I want to rush anything or anything with that, but, uh, you know, efficiency and, and stuff like that. Not that I'm trying to be super efficient in this game, but, you know, I don't want to drag out my time too much. You know. I don't think there's a... Let me see. Uh... Dialogue. Yeah, the lock thing has now disappeared now that we've activated it. So, yeah, it's a good thing I talked to those people earlier for those who wanted to hear that dialogue. There you go. Hello! Good sir and madam. Hey there! On the boat! Da, da! Barge on other side! You still need us? Yeah, we... I need you to help me pull the train. My name is... Lo oh, nope. Lo can we... Okay. Let's just ask her about the mission then. There. Your barge is over the locks now. It's up to you to keep your part of the bargain. Yes, Belanchrau. Atash loco loco. My husband say, return to train, attach chain, then barge will pull. Okay, I'll get moving. All right, I think it's... What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak, loco coco bitchen. What did your husband say? You attach chain to train and chain to train with barge. Hop! Catch it, sir. Yep, we need a cutscene for that. Sure did. Anyway, we need to, uh... I think we just have to go to the next screen for that. Oh, could have ran a little bit faster. New... Let's see. Because we're supposed to... Basically what we're... Oh, there it is. I, I can barely see it. <laughs> yeah, the chain. Okay. Anyway, yeah, we need to attach that to the train, so... If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. Yeah, they threw a chain there with no, uh, oh, um, oh, I forgot we couldn't talk to them anymore. They threw a chain, but they threw a chain and nothing to attach hey it to. Da. Okay, Let's see if they say anything. My, uh, Oops. Can we? Nope. There. Yeah. My, oh. Okay. Nope. What do we do now to tie my train to the boat? Mine was. What did your, you, uh. Okay, nothing new. Oh, wait, huh? It must be really neat. Oh, slick the boat. Excuse, my husband say he like his barge and he not like your, sure. Oh, okay, that's new. I think I don't remember it that. It must one. be really neat to travel by river. Oh, stick the boot. I never forget it, that's grund. For me, loco loco is fantastic. I'm a climb the road, but oost it. Okay, you guide. <laughs> Excuse me? My husband say he like his barge and he not like your train. Too noisy. If you want to travel in tin can, you stay in tin can. Sure. Uh, well, maybe I've heard that I'll before, leave but... You too. Okay, well, anyway, yeah, they just threw us a chain, but there was nothing attached to the chain, so we'll finally use the hook that we've had for, for a while. So now we can actually attach that to the train. Into the bra of infiniteness. Finally, too bad we didn't jump on the train while they moved it. Good, good job, Kate. But yeah, we had to walk all the way down there to charge the thing. Or we could have jumped on the barge, but at first I was thinking, how's the barge strong enough to pull a train? But I realized the train is not a full fledged like locomotive where it has like multiple uh, cars attached to it. It's just the main, it's like the passenger train and the, the engine basically. Oh, who's calling this time? Hello? Hello. Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukon at any moment. Please make haste to come. 
Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. All right, now we have a new objective. However, before we go back there, let's go ahead and charge the train up. Um, actually, does does Oscar have any extra dialogue for us now that we've got the train there? Probably not, but I thought I'd check anyway. You know, it's seeing stuff that people might miss the first time they play the game too. So, everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am wait. Okay. Because sometimes people will just solve the mystery and they'll go on, not even ask extra characters other things. Um, but you know, I think I would have liked being a student at this university. Everything's just so different here. Yorkshire does feel like another planet. The planet New York? Is that our next stop? Not exactly, Oscar. But I don't think you'd like it there. It doesn't run like clockwork. Well, I've never been to New York, so I couldn't tell you. I'm, the closest I've been is to Boston, so. Oscar, get ready. I'm going to start winding up the clockwork engine. Good, Kate Walker. Then we can carry on our journey. An engineer prides himself on punctuality. I know, Oscar, I know. You know, the interesting thing about this game is part, chapter two could almost be considered a non-chapter, un unimportant chapter. But with the fact that we learned a little bit about Hans and some other things, it's lucky that they did that. Otherwise, people could have written off this chapter going, well, what was the point, you know? But luckily, they're, they're in just the atmosphere and everything. Oscar, couldn't you just try giving me a hand winding the train back up again? My incompetence in this matter will only hinder you, Kate Walker. Always thinking of others, Oscar. Well, at least he's telling the truth, I guess. This guy has. It's simple, but he's obviously a genius. And then there are the mammoths. Funny guy, don't you reckon? I'll have you know Hans Vorlberg is my creator, Kate Walker. Yeah, don't, don't, don't insult my god, basically. Speaking of mechanical problems, there aren't any other hitches I should know about, Oscar? This train has no mechanical problems, Kate Walker. Winding the spring mechanism is standard service procedure. Okay, okay, Oscar, don't get all touchy about it. I didn't mean it like that. Don't get all touchy-feely. Everybody seems to like the Sauvignon grape here. People and birds. Especially these accursed Amazon cuckoos. It is regrettable that my constitution does not enable me to ingurgitate this product. That's everybody excluding Oscar. Ingurgitate? I've never heard that before. I'm off, Oscar. Yes. But uh, I'll have to look that up and see what that means. Because there's regurgitate, which is to basically throw up. So I wonder if that ingurgitate just means to imbibe or drink or whatever. I assume the the inflex the um, influxes that's what that means. So, but anyway, I didn't actually expect all that extra dialogue from Oscar talking to him. So you, know, you learn something new every day. I don't know if I did that the first time I played. I was usually when I first when I played a lot of these games. I was usually pretty clicky on everything to see what responses you get, even if it took the game forever to finish it. So, actually, I might have to, I might have, go, I might have, you know, I think I had to go off the other side. Sorry about that. For some reason, I thought I had to go from this side. I think I just had to jump on the other side of the train to charge it up. So, my bad. Yeah, see, because of that. So, yeah, I have to, I have to pop off on the other side. Kind of like when we were at the train station in Vela Delane, or Vela Delane, or how do you pronounce it? So, sorry about that. I don't know everything, man. Okay, but basically solving this is basically what happened in the, when we did it back in Avala Delane. So we just have to uh, pull the lever out and then turn it in and so forth and so on. So I don't think there's anything extra to do here other than that. So let's uh, pull out the device. It's out. Let's turn the wheel so we can uh, wrap it inside or get it inside so we can uh, charge up our engine. And then lever again. Haha, -ha, it charges with ease. If only other batteries could be just take a few seconds to charge like that instead of taking like an hour or whatever. Oh, it even completely resets it on us. Thank you. Oh, who's it this time? Hello? Hello? Where are you? 
Hi, Dan. I'm in Bergstadt. What? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary. If you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? I don't think so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Don't be so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. Kate, I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? But my mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. We? If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Your shoes? Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well? Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on this subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it. Call me back when you calm down. I was perfectly calm before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? You can be such a selfish... Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Well, it's not like Kate is, per is this perfect lady, because she's the same lady who won't walk through two feet of water to get to the other side, and we have to go around about on it, but... Still, it sounds like Dan's being unreasonable there. Kind of being a, you know, kind of being a, you know, a butt hat, if you know what I mean. But, like, being unreasonable. So much for the loving fiancé supporting his uh, significant other in a time of weirdness. But, uh, yeah, it sounds like things aren't uh, too smooth at back at home uh, with this couple. Uh, so now, uh, yeah, we can't really move. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to click there. Now let's go meet the professor on this thing, because he's got the mammoth, and without that mammoth, we can't continue on. Because that has something to do with the, like, the train not moving, because... I don't know if they ever straight up explain it, but we do need to get that mammoth back, so... I think it's because I solved that part too soon to actually have that situation come up. Because I think Oscar was said we still have some complications, and then you're supposed to um, get the mammoth um, for that, so... All right, back to the university. Yeah, we have to walk all the way back. Hooray. Well, at least Kate's getting a good workout here. Don't have to worry about uh, going to the gym for a while. You know, not going to put on a little weight from from whatever Oscar's feeding you. Which, actually, if that was designed for one person, I wonder if it was designed originally for Anna and uh, maybe those food designed for her. Otherwise, if it was designed for Hans, how old would that food? We don't have any extra... You know, let's, uh, before we not talk to these people for the rest of the adventure... I'm sorry to disturb you. What? I'm just seeing if they have any last little unique dialogue. I don't think you've been telling me the entire truth, Mr. Station Master. No, wait a second. I, I never really intended you. You have to believe me. I can see I can't... Or you're just not very good at lying. Oh, I'll never do it again. Promise. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut off his line of dialogue, but... Uh, I... No, wait a yeah, second. Just says, I, I, I never really intended you. You have to believe me. I can see I can't pull the wool over your eyes. You're pretty sharp. Ooh. Okay, Ooh. that's the same. Or I just want to show you the line I accidentally skipped. I've got it. I found a winding machine uh, down over there along the track. A winding machine? I knew that strange gizmo had something to do with trains. Uh, how does it work then? I was going to ask you the same question. Uh, miss, I only feed the birds and water the plants. Mechanical stuff's just not in the job description, okay? Didn't even want to learn, did you? The name Hans... Oh. <laughs> okay, that's the same. Okay, let's get the story straight. My train has left your station, so it won't disturb your peace and quiet anymore. And nothing is broken. At least I hope not. The train and the station made to go together after all, miss. But, I mean, I thought it frightened your birds. Go figure. Reckon it gave them a little entertainment, after all. 
So we could just left it there. All these birds in a. This is no order. I can. It wasn't a nightmare. I. You have. Oh. Why not? I. You. Okay, that was. I the won't same. disturb. Welcome. All right, I think that's it for him for the rest of for. So, no more Mr. Station Master. Actually, where did the boat people go? Because we never reset everything. I think they're still back at um, near that area, but we can't couldn't run across them. But uh, actually, I wonder if they're. I'm gonna double check something really quick. I know we run across them one more time, I believe, but no, I think okay, just making sure. Because we never reset everything, so I know they're not back here. But I think they just disappeared for a hot minute, so. But they should be back by the time we listen to the lecture by Mr. Pons. And that should take a bit of time, so. Yeah, one little bit of learning before we leave. Oh yeah, and now that the bandstand's working, they go constantly be playing in the background now. Ah, very soothing. Always a fan of classical music. Of any type. Well, not any type. There is bad classical music. But of course you could say that about any profession. Uh, let's check in with the rectors one more time. Just to make sure there's no, like, dialogue we can get now that we've basically got the train out. And then, then we listen to the lecture, and we're pretty much done with the university, and then we just go to the end of the chapter. Well, there's a few more things, but, you know. Yeah. I guess I'm caught, uh, slightly extending episodes by listening to every little bit, every person's dialogue. But like I said, a lot of people might miss this the first time they play the game, because they pretty much know what they need to do, and they skip. Gentlemen, I'm off. Mm, which, no. Nope. Okay, that's the same. I haven't introduced. Okay, per that's the same. Tri I want to express my gratitude. Thanks to you, I can carry on my journey. We would also like to thank you for repairing our bandstand. It was beyond all hope. Allow us to wish you good luck. And see you next year at enrollment time, perhaps. I doubt it. But thanks anyway. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. Can you possibly help me out here? Miss... We okay, can that's... Repeating. Does the name? You mean? Yeah, too bad there's not extra dialogue for the band saying. I finally that. managed to get my train out of the station. Everything may return to normal. I hope you're happy. Yes, we are now very satisfied, and we thank you, Miss, for respecting our regulations. A train should first stop, then subsequently leave to leave space for other trains. There we go. One more little problem we've managed to tie up, and now we can return to some highbrow concerns. Like what? How to get more wine? That idea of the state. It, it, okay, it, that's the same. Oh. Here we are. Bit all thank and okay, that's it for the rectory. We do not have to talk to these gentlemen anymore. But yeah, it's one of those things where at first you find them kind of annoying because of the situation. But now that Kate's done everything they have, and they did, and and they're uh, like put their end of the bargain, you know, uh, down. They actually gave us what we needed it kind of you almost see him as charming for you know because of what happened but anyway okay back up to the yeah where we need to go is what what we saw earlier that little auditorium thing that'll allow us to listen to the good doctor's presentation on mammoths apparently he was able to make this after Watching the uh, ah, er there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. Yeah, only three people watching. I'm surprised you're not disappointed, Doctor. But I guess you're used to that. But yeah, I guess he only has to rate it. Oh, oh, more than three people. There's, ooh, six. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. 
we know that the origins of the Yukos date back to the last Ice Age. Curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe, and more precisely, in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. This people, it seems, undertook a long migration, over centuries, towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in cis. There's, no, there's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Hmm? Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. You call forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes, as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yukos' way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with them the centuries, centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yukal Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian Ice Ark is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, King Mammoth still in exists, still in existence. A sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukol's tender care. And the island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukol's traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yukol population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukols have lost their tribal identity, 
and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 20s, the last true surviving, true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lecture should you so require them. Ooh, man, I had a good rest, folks. Man, uh, uh, what were we talking about, Doctor? No, actually, that was actually pretty interesting. Um, I'm not too familiar. I'm not sure if a lot of that what he talked about is actually true or accurate or whatnot. Um, but I like to think that there's some truth in this game. That sometimes adventure games stuff like that will kind of point out like some historical facts. But I'd uh, I would suggest probably looking it up yourself, or maybe I will before this is all over. So, no, I was actually listening to the whole thing. I was just joking but you know like when you're a kid in school or in college you fall asleep during certain lectures although i didn't mainly because i was paying for those or the uh, college lectures so i was gonna listen in on them dang it you know i'm not gonna sleep through something i paid like you know 10 12 grand a, a year to, to go um um yeah i never understood why people go to college and then just skip classes and all that I'm like dude you already paid the college might as well take advantage of it, so. But anyway, what do, what do I know, so. All right, good. That was a nice uh, lecture, Mr. Pons. Uh, interesting. Uh, gl glad the... Uh, I don't need oh, that. Oh, we still can't take that. We do need that, by the way. Please don't tell me I have to go all the way back to grab this at one point. I, I will. But there's the lecture notes. And then Mr. Pons has a few extra lines of dialogue. From what I remember, he does after after everything, so. Whoa, that thing changed size. Man, apparently Kate can change the laws of physics. The Legend of the Ivory Ark. The last ice age ended when the planet warmed up. The sun climactic change threatened the existence of many animal species, including mammoths inhabiting the far northern Siberian wastes. It is said that the Yokel people decided to follow Noah's example and build an enormous ark to try and preserve the mammoth's existence. They lived in symbiosis with the pachyderm, which was at the heart of their religious worship. The ship was constructed entirely from mammoth tusks. Wow. A small herd of mammoths was installed on board with enormous quantities of fodder. Control of the ship was entrusted to a handful of particularly intrepid yokel clans. Their mission was to take the animals to other lands with pastures more befitting to their survival. One day, 50 summers later, as legend would have it, the ark returned to its starting point. The yokels were astonished to find nobody aboard apart from the carcasses of several mammoths perfectly preserved in ice encasing the ship. The clansmen believed this was a mysterious sign from the gods, and they ate the mammoths in a memorable feast. Set sail once more, carried away by the once more, carried away by the currents. Again, it returned half a century later, with not a soul on board except more well-preserved frozen mammoth carcasses. Hmm. Sounds like more of a ghost story than anything. This mysterious mystery continued for millennia. Each time, the surprisingly well-preserved mammoths appeared out of nowhere. The yokels interpreted the phenomenon as a benevolent offering for their dead companions who were believed to have perished on the ark's first voyage in some horrendous maritime cataclysm. It is believed that their souls had found eternal rest on a mythical island that the shaman named Siberia. They constructed a whole religion around this belief with rites and customs punctuated by the periodic appearances of the phantom ship and its precious cargo. For centuries, nothing changed the Ark's mysterious cycle. Only the size of the mammoths changed, reducing, reducing imperceptibly over time. Until one day, a hundred or so years ago, the Ark returned earlier than expected. It was empty. The Okuls were dumbfounded and utterly confused. The spirits of their ancestors had forsaken them. Everything they had believed in that had been the bedrock of the culture since the very depths of time had now lost all meaning. The most fin fantastic... Fanatical believers noted that the frequency of appearances had in fact increased and maintained that there was still hope as long as the Ark continues its return journeys from the unknown. Some elder yokels boasted having seen it several times, but then, hen thenceforth, each time the white ship returned, its only offering an empty shell to the despairing eyes of the safari yokels. The belief became superstition, the reality became legend. Hmm. Let's grab the mammoth. Yeah, I can't believe it's not letting us grab it some like note I forgot to some like note I forgot to read that allowed me to grab that but I will need it at some point but 
I mean, I could double check with the library, but I might do that off screen, so. All right, Professor. Perhaps I can prick your brain a bit. What is it you want to know, miss? Yeah, let's see. I would have loved to study at a uni... No, hey. Uh, let's see, that's the I same. Have... Every... I must congratulate you for your lecture. You were right. The subject is absolutely fascinating. I never believed that mammoths could be so interesting. What you heard was only the tip of the iceberg, my dear. But if I have at least awoken a passion in you, I'm only too proud. Did Hans Varlberg agree with your hypothesis on the Yukels being able to tame mammoths? Now, Hans was no man of science. His pathological obsession was to find mammoths that were still in existence. Such a hypothesis is somewhat overblown, don't you think? You don't believe in it yourself? Mammoths died out thousands of years ago. Of this, we are certain. Today, the only mammoths in Siberia are frozen ones. Huh? Do you know where Hans might have gone after his stay here in Barakstadt? No, but I would not be surprised if he left in search of the Yukols, or what is left of them today. Hmm. Well, that's probably our next step then. What would you say about seeing? <laughs> okay, we asked him about that. Your hands varled. Can you? Okay, that's I'll the same. Whoops. Oh, sorry. I didn't what is it? Barkstadt is an amazing experience. Amazing experience. I uh, you came. Yeah. You mean? Okay. Oh, that's the uh, same. My train stopped in Ornitho. Uh, okay. The I'm Thank okay, you. Okay, we're good with his dialogue. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry. No. Okay. Um, yeah, I could have swore there was... I must have... Maybe I missed some, like, random bit of trivia or something that required me to grab this, because I do... I don't need that. Oh, come on. I don't want to have to walk all the way back for this. I'm probably going to have to, aren't I? Nuts. Ugh. Unless there's... Like I said, unless there's something I double missed, but I think we're good on that, so... Okay. Boo. -boo. Let me ask you before I call an episode. Let me double check with the library real quick. Maybe I missed some data. I know. It, I think it's a case of just having to know that I need that stuff before actually grabbing it. But I think that was locked, wasn't it? Okay. No Locked's point. And then in the library, the only thing I thought the only thing in the library was the um, stuff about the bur the cuckoos, so we knew about what we needed to do for plot significance, but. But I don't remember seeing anything in the library. Like, I didn't remember seeing any extra books. And I walked all across the little, you know, area exploring it, so. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything there, so. No. No. Oh, well. Maybe it's something that's near near the near the gate. Because, yeah, even though we got the train wound up, we still need to get through that gate. So, there, let's get out of here. And as far as I'm aware, the rectors don't have any new in, uh, any extra info outside of what we just talked to him earlier. And I don't, I'll double check with this guy, but I don't think he says anything new. I think he just talks about our, our uh, you know, lady Hello. loves. Hey, baby, you part just to, hey, can't let. Yeah, that's it, so, nope. Just being a, just being a, being a not very nice guy. Well, no, nice, but being a bit uh, too ag aggressive is what it means. So, but yep, we need to go all the way back to the 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 train again. Yay! <laughs> all this running. Too bad. Uh, I know in later adventure games, not particularly this one, but others, if you just double clicked on the end of an area, it automatically teleports you to the next scene. But unfortunately, this is before that started becoming a common occurrence in in adventure games where you get instantly teleported. You still have to walk all the way. You know, walk, don't run to this uh, next location. Oh, well. Yeah, the train is going on gone to this location. No have to deal with the birds or the trees or the what's inside. The, the boat's not there. Well, if you ran down the stairs and tripped, that'd be the, the stairs and tripped. That'd be the, uh, that'd be the end of this journey for Miss Kate Walker. That'd be kind of a sad way to finish. Finish how Siberia ends. The character just trips on a stair. And then she's like, well, she died. But how'd she die? Well, she was a bit too excitable. All right. Let's see. Now that the train's wound up, we're clearly are ready to go. Right? 
Right, Oscar? Right. No more ifs, ands, or buts. Oh, yeah, we need to pop off, drop off the uh, mammoth, too. Okay, we've got to be done, right? We can just go through that gate and we're done? Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. Okay, well, anyway. You know? The plant. Oh, yeah, that's the same. Every that's it. Same. Speaking of mechanical problems. This train has no ma Okay, okay, Oscar, don't get Okay. Wait, was that different, Speaking dialogue? of mechanical problems, there aren't any other hitches I should know about, Oscar? This train has no mechanical problems, Kate. No, okay, that's same. okay, Oscar, don't get all touchy about it. I didn't mean it like that. Okay, and then... We'll save some time if you help me retrieve everything we need for the train. Very possibly. But such actions are beyond my mandate. You're right. I really should rid myself of the delusion that you are useful to me in some way. You should limit your requests for help to my actual capabilities, Kate Walker. You look just so... so... just so... so... human. Yeah, well, at least the game pr tells us the truth and that Oscar's not as useful as we think he is. That's it, Oscar. We can go. Kate Walker, I must remind you of one of the journey regulations. All objects featured in the train's inventory must be replaced before departure. I don't understand. Something is missing, Kate Walker. Oh my god, the mammoth doll. Please return it to its allocated position, Kate Walker. And I think, uh, I, yeah, I think in, in Chapter 1 in Val Delane, I think he has the same excuse. He says we can't move because we're missing something. And he just mentioned some personal things about Hans. And yeah, I kind of saw that like way too quickly to get that line of dog. So that's probably one of the few things I missed. But that would have happened anyway if you play the game naturally and didn't know about it. So... All right, well, it looks like we have to put the doll back to its spot, and that's the only thing we have to do before we leave, right? Not some inane, like, last puzzle or two, or the or the, the fact we can't leave because someone can't see straight. We'll find that out, that out at the end of Part 2 and the start of Part 3, or, sorry, Chapter 3 of Siberia. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.